Hey everybody, Randy and Matt here in the Eastwood Garage with another live video. Um, you probably saw us this morning at 8.30 for our live daily deal. Don't forget to check in every day uh, then as well. And don't forget, if you have any questions over here, Scotty C, give it up for Scotty C, everybody's favorite lead tech advisor. If you have any questions, post them on Facebook, YouTube. He's going to answer them or throw them over to us. How's it going today, Scott? Going pretty well. So yeah, make sure you get your questions up on here. Uh, we can answer them or shoot them over to Randy and Matt to answer. And while we're at it, what is this piece of metal we have over here? <laughs> this, this Funny you ask, Scott. <laughs> strange piece of metal. Uh, that is, if for any of you guys that don't follow us on Instagram, uh, you should. Uh, username Eastwood Co. We've been to posting some teaser shots of this uh, project we had going, just a quick little one. Uh, we showed how to take this 1933 Chrysler dash that looked like it was under the ocean in the Titanic, and we made it all bare metal, and it's in its birthday suit. Okay. It's, so pretty, it's, all... it's pretty impressive. I mean, if well, we, we were shooting a video. Yeah. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube because in another week or so, you're going to see the video on it. You're probably going to see some promos on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram where we, we have been posting pictures of it because it was absolutely covered in rust yeah. and now it looks great. Um, but today we're going over our five, we're supposed to be five favorite products, but I think we're up to six now. Yeah, Scott, do you have a favorite uh, uh, must have garage tool? All of them are must haves, <laughs> but you can't go wrong with the underhood light. <laughs> All right, okay, then we'll start with oh. the underhood light. So you're not, yeah, that not, transition. not yeah, too much anticipation. All right, so the underhood light, 40 super bright LEDs, 1400 lumens, bam, right there it is. That's the money shot. From dark to light, that Joe, I think Joe might have missed that. Ready? So there it is. Cool thing, the tubes rotate 180 degrees, both of them. Matt can grab that one a little bit. Yep. Or just, no, I meant the tube. Oh, just yeah, rotate yeah. rotate the tube a little bit out. And then, and then they can rotate in, so you can really direct the light wherever you want it. And as Matt was just demonstrating, each side, it goes from 48 to 68 inches. So you can go from a small hood like this Mustang all the way up to a, to a large truck hood. And it's great, you know, you can use it under your car, you can use it in the interior. It folds up 180 degrees, so it gets really compact because it'll basically fold in half. And if you've seen any of our videos, we've got tons of videos where we've been using it. Um, and like I said, it's definitely a must-have uh, garage tool. And so. surprisingly, it gets, I mean, you get three hours of life out of it, it on, the, on the, uh, the low setting. You get three hours of use while it's unplugged, and you get an hour and a half on the super bright setting. Uh, and then, of course, you can run it. A nice thing about this light, which a lot of LED or underhood, like shop lights, similar, uh, you can run this with it plugged in. Yeah. So you can actually just plug it in if you're in your shop, and it'll last as long as you want, no problem. And so. as you can see, it lights up the entire compartment as opposed to an old drop cord or a little magnet light that only lights up that one little spot. Yes. This is lighting up the entire area. So great thing, as you said. Great way to start our must-have shop tools. So let's move on. What do we have next? So next thing we have is another. This is definitely one of my favorites. If you have a lot of, uh, if you have a lot of vehicles and not a lot of space, you may need to kind of pack them into your shop or around. Or if you just have a lot of projects that don't run or are tough to move, this is our hydraulic wheel dollies. They're available in pairs. You can get them. In, uh, you can get two pairs, obviously, if you'd like to buy a full set for a vehicle. Um, these are nice. It'll go up to a 22-inch uh, wheel. Uh, and it goes up to 12 inches wide here. And, and each one will hold 1,300 pounds. Yes. yes. And the so cool thing is, like you're doing right now, you're jacking it up. So you don't need a jack. Where a lot of other wheel dollies, you have to roll a jack under the car, jack up the front of it, put your dollies under, pull the jack out, go around to the back. Where this, it actually jacks yeah. itself. And this is nice. You can just quickly, I mean, I like this because I can move a car where I need to move it, pull them out real quick, and then we're all set. And you can use it on another vehicle. So you don't need to like the the set where you have to jack them up it's a pain in the butt because and we've got a bunch of videos you see these in use all the time in our videos and a lot of people ask you know how do they do on blacktop well <clears throat> we've got the video of the corvair where we've got the corvair on wheel dollies and we push it the whole way around uh, from the back of the garage all the way around to the front of the garage. so what is that like 150 yards on blacktop and yeah. it, it, it rolled, it rolled it around yeah it's no problem so when you want to release this to let it out you of course pull the safety up uh, lock out and then right here is the valve quickly drops it out you can pull it open by hand and you can roll it out and of course if you uh, check out the product page we have a little uh, rack for this so you can stow them away on the rack if you don't have anything to use them on right in the corner it's easy to use uh, these are worth their weight in gold it's it's so much easier to move a vehicle around it's uh, it's definitely a nice investment and while we're on the Mustang 
uh, you know, people, you, the Mustang's in storage, it's on wheel yeah. dollies. Doesn't get driven a lot. Yeah. So we have our battery maintainer. This one is really nice. Um, again, if you have a lot of vehicles that are in storage or maybe uh, like if you're in this part of the world where we actually get a winner and yeah. you don't drive your classic cars or your collector car in the winter, this is something you definitely need to have. You need to keep it plugged in over the winter and maintaining the battery. Uh, now the nice thing about this is I, I just use one of these for this reason. This one actually charges as well as maintains. So. Uh, I had one of my cars where I just left the little light on, the battery was low, and it mm -hmm. just wouldn't quite start. Plugged this in for a few hours, car started right up, and then I just left it on overnight. So it has a light that blinks when it's charging. So it's going to let you know. And then it has an additional light that lets you know when it's in storage. So when it goes under 12.8 volts, it goes back to a charging mode. So it kind of bounces back and forth. It has a self-sensing microprocessor inside that allows you to do that, which is really nice. Um, and it's great more than cars. I mean, if you've got yeah. a snowmobile, ATV, lawn equipment, mm -hmm. a boat, anything that's going to be in storage, you just hook that up to it. Because every time the battery goes dead, you're shortening the life of the battery. Yeah. It's going to cost you money because you're going to be buying more batteries than you need. We hook one of them up. Plus, you know, if you get a a nice day over winter or, or in the early spring or whenever, you can just, you know, you, you know Pull your battery is going to start. It's simple, hook up the clamps, plug it in. If you can find an outlet. Yeah, if you can find an outlet. If you can find you can an plug outlet. plug this in. Uh, the cool thing, like I do in some of my vehicles, like my, uh, what has my Model A, I, I have, we have this quick disconnect. So what I do is I actually leave, I have the battery stowed behind the seat. So I leave these, the, uh, the clamps right on the battery and then you can do the quick disconnect here and let this hang so that you can just put this away and all you have is these little terminals. So and it has the, has the terminal ones which are yep. great, like, like if you have a motorcycle, you get in here. Or if you got a side thing. post that you yeah, uh, want to put on. Post. So that way, you know, a lot of times it's difficult to get to in a motorcycle. We leave this hooked up and it's got the quick disconnect, uh, which is easy to get to. So battery maintainer is definitely a must have. Um, if you have any cars, you know, that you're not driving if you're storing over winter, or just, like I said, like equipment, you know, motorcycles, boats, jet skis, mm -hmm. whatever it is, that's in storage, you know, it, it's, it's great to have. Saves your money on buying batteries, and when you want to run it, you know it's going to start. Yeah, that's, uh, again, get a bunch of those, have them all, to, all hooked up to all your vehicles, and it's worth it uh, just for the small cost of those. So, next thing, we're doing a lot of stuff on the Mustang here. Oh, if, Must you, if you were with us this morning, you, you saw the tire pressure gauge. Yeah, we got the, uh, the gauge and inflator uh, that is digital. So this is really handy because it goes up to 100 PSI. Um, and it also works really well below 10 PSI. So if you're doing something like off-road or you're on the beach where you need to go and run your tires down pretty low, this thing is quite accurate. It goes to point, uh, point 0.1. So you can actually set, turn this on here. Yeah, really fine increments. So you can actually see fine increments by doing, uh, by doing that. Has a little fancy blue LED light. It's Eastwood blue. So if you're at the track or out and out, you know. Yep. And nighttime, or if you spend too long on the beach, you can do that. Now the other thing is you don't need shop air to check your pressure. So I have this hooked up without the air hose. We can plug it right in, and it gives us our pressure right here on the gauge, uh, without even hooking shop air up. If you need to deflate a little bit. You can do that right here. So if you're on the beach or something, or if you're off-roading or at the drag track and you want to lower it, you can do that by pushing the trigger in halfway and it will let you right on the fly set your, uh, set your pressure on your tires. And then of course, as expected, you can hook your air up, air the tire up and it's really great. So that's a, a couple few. more things. Well, well, while we're getting ready to go over uh, the belt disc sander and the yep. vise, we should check in with Scotty and see if we have any questions. Or We certainly have a, a couple, uh, one of which I can quick address while Matt's setting up, and that would be with the tire pressure gauge. If you can let air out while you actually have shop air attached to it, the answer yes. is yes. So all you do is about quarter trigger that uh, the throttle, if you will, and it'll actually let air out so you don't have to constantly be unhooking like you used to back in the day and release a little bit of air, then go back onto it again. It makes it easy. Um, and we've also had some requests for some potential upcoming videos. And I know someone's looking at, looking for, uh, you know, if we're having another welding one coming up soon. I don't know if you remember the exact date, but uh, up later this month. 24th, uh, it's Green. a Wednesday. Yeah, Bob Two, two weeks on. from today. There it is, I knew you'd um, know. Yes, everybody's favorite retail store. 
Bob Green. Yep, he teaches a lot of our welding classes Bob, here, so yeah. he's going to be doing a uh, beginner welding one. So it'll be a great place to uh, tune in. If you're yeah, if you've ever been in our Pottstown store, Bob teaches the classes in our Pottstown store. So and he's very popular. His classes are very popular. So we're going to bring him in for a live video in two weeks, the end of July, or I think it's July 24th. Yeah. Two weeks from today. Yeah. yeah so that's one you're definitely going to want to tune in. It's a it's a MIG welding uh, beginners course. Then a couple weeks after that, in early August, Matt's got a MIG troubleshooting one. I believe. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a MIG troubleshooting. Uh, Bob does a great job, and you, any of you guys that uh, or gals that don't live local, that you can go to one of our stores to take one of our classes that normally costs money. Uh, you're going to get one of the classes for free by watching our live video, which is pretty cool. So make sure you tune into that, and you can get to watch um, him teach a beginner, aka Joe the camera guy. Yeah, oh yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe's going to learn how to weld. I forgot about that. That should be. That means. I may have to operate the camera, but I'm afraid this might be an hour class, so yeah. somebody else may operate the camera and I'll direct, <laughs> or I'll be sick that day. <laughs> so next must have, this is one I use, I use the crap out of in my shop probably every day at home. I, use, I turn this thing on and use it. Uh, this is our belt disc sander, which is uh, really, really nice. It's got a uh, four, four inch di uh, a belt rather on this, and it's got the six inch disc on this. Uh, one nice feature is that you can actually raise the surface here so you can sand in a vertical uh, or horizontal which is really handy and there's a little allen bolt you can lock that in place if need to. has a quick release here so if you do need to change the belt out it's no problem at all. We offer 80, 120 and 240 uh, belt end uh, disc for these and uh, you can also adjust the work surface here to 45 degrees so if you put it, you want to put a bevel on something you can quick which I'll show you guys. Uh, uh oh, I think oh, we're man. just showing your back right now. Oh, oh, there we go. Left-handed, I gotta. It like happened magically when you turned away from the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can move the work surface here like that. And if you want to put yeah. a bevel on something, we can turn it on. Now, is there a reason you were working off the left side of that sanding disc? But working off the left side? Yeah. So that it doesn't throw it? But yes. <laughs> There's a little tech tip, right? Yeah. If you're using one of those. If you feel it grabbing the workpiece, don't do that. Yeah. So it does have an adjustable, um, like I said, both of the work surfaces are adjustable. It also has a nice little area here that's almost like an exhaust on the back side. So if you guys are trying to keep your shop nice and clean, you can hook that up to a hose and put it into a bucket or something like that so that it's throwing all the, you know, the majority of the dust is getting thrown into an area not all over your workbench, which is really nice. Uh, again, we have all the different um, grits for this so you can swap out. So if you want to do something that's uh, not, not as aggressive, you can put a 240 on. I also use this a lot to sharpen my tungsten. So I pick a strip of the belt on the top and that's an area that I sharpen my tungsten with. It, it's it's nice quick way to do that. You could fire it up and and do it, and uh, I have good results with that. So that's that's a good one that you can grab. It's inexpensive, and you bolt it right to the bench, and you're ready to go. And the last thing, which is absolutely a necessity in every garage, yes. is a vice. If you don't have a vice, you're, you're messing up. You need one of these in your shop. Actually, you need a few of these in your shop. Probably every workbench needs one. Uh, this is a nice take on the old school antique heavy vices that everybody's so, uh, you know, everybody knows those are great to use, but they're usually broken. They've gotten really expensive for yeah. used, broken, damaged ones. So we came out with a nice eight inch vise uh, that has kind of, it's heavy duty, so you can take a beating. And it kind of has a lot of the features that people uh, seem to like and we like in a lot of the older vices that you've seen. So again, of course it has, again, the eight inch jaws, which is really nice. So it's, it's wide enough that you can get uh, a nice big grab on something. Uh, it does have the serrated or textured jaws in it, so it will grab into something. It won't spin if you're trying to do something on it. Um, Opens up eight inches. Yeah, it has the eight inch opening. Plus it has the anvil surface. You need to pound on something, right? So it opens up nice and large, like, uh, like Randy said, to, to the eight inch anvil. You can pound on stuff. And another really nice feature that a lot of vices I think are missing, it's got the pipe jaws inside. So if you ever tried to put a piece of tubing or pipe in the normal uh, flat portion of the jaws, they always slip. You're trying to do something in there, it's moving around, it's, it's slipping. Um, or if you're trying to uh, 
work on something in there. Uh, even cutting tubing can be difficult in there. So what you can do is take a piece of tubing that has on both sides, has the rounded jaws, and we're gonna go back down. So what it does is it grabs right underneath the flat jaws. It's gonna grab in, it can tighten down now. The other nice thing is because it's rounded, it's not flattening out the tubing. So if you have thin wall tubing, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually grabbing around the, dia uh, the uh, circumference of the tubing and it's not going to crush it. If we put it in this top area with the flat jaws, sure we can get it to tighten down and not slip, but you're probably gonna deform uh, the shape of the tubing and it's not gonna be round anymore. So this is a really nice feature that we have on ours that um, a lot of vices don't have nowadays. And of course it's got the locks here so you can swivel this, so you can loosen up the locks. So if you need and to get- And it's got two of them so you can really tighten it down. Yeah. You see a lot of lesser value, they'll have one. And don't hit them with a hammer. Because <laughs> that's what bends them. It bends them up. Bends them real quick. Um, as long as you're tightening them both evenly. It's got real nice engagement. So you just keep loosening them. There we go. So we can loosen, get it in the angle that we want. Tighten each of them down. They'll find their, kind of find their spot. Got that one tightened. Tighten the other side, and we're good to go. So then you can um, use this to do whatever you need to do. And not only is the vise great for just clamping metal down, a lot of our tools are made. Yeah. Because a lot of our tools are made for the home shop that's small, you don't have a lot of room. So they're made to be stored away, so you don't always have to bolt them down to your workbench. Yeah. So our shrinker stretcher right there, I mean, just stuff we have underneath there. Bead you know, roller, some specialty yeah. dollies, bead roller, you know, mm -hmm. uh, our brake. A lot of stuff is designed to go in, go into the uh, device, so that way you know you can use it, it's held securely. Yep. Then when you're done with it, you can just put it underneath your workbench, and it stores nice. So yeah. vice is also great for all that too. Yeah, you need you need a couple of these good couple vices. Of them. So and then of course uh, we have our satisfaction guarantee with our warranty, of course. So guys, definitely give it a try, um, and we back everything that we sell. So if you if you have any concerns about it, you give Scott a call, you yell at him, he'll tell you. Uh, how to troubleshoot it, or yeah. they'll help you out and make sure that you are satisfied, whatever it takes, right, Scott? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we always make sure, we wanna make sure you're happy with the product and you know, using it for, you know, to make your life a lot easier. So do we have any more questions, Scott? Sure, we got one more, just in reference to the uh, grit that comes on when Matt was on the grinder. Do you know what grit that is? Uh, the, the one on the top of here, I think this was a 120 is what it's, uh, what comes with standard? Yeah, what comes with it, yeah. I believe it's 80 grit, correct? Yep, correct. So 80 grits kind of- He was stint. just testing you. Yeah. He knew the answer. Oh, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what does it come with? He's like, yes. from over here, that looks like 80 grit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he's looking at throw me off my game once in a while, I'll throw you guys off. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you Jeez. Can do that. Uh, now, so, we, in all seriousness, though, it's 80 grit. We want to make sure you guys have, you know, good quality tools. So, you know, certainly if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We can take care of you. So, all right. Cool. Well, is that it? That's the must-haves. Okay, that's uh, our garage must-haves. And uh, thanks for joining us again every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And we've also been doing them at 8.30 in the morning with a daily deal as well. So don't forget to tune in there then. And, um, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning and next week. See you guys. Yeah.